Welcome back to chapter 4.1, day 3. Uh, we're going to be looking at sample surveys and what can go wrong. So most sample surveys, they are affected by errors in, a just, in addition to just sampling variability. Good sampling techniques include the art of reducing all sources of error. So under coverage is one of those errors. Under coverage is one of those errors. And this occurs when members of the population cannot be chosen in a sample. Uh, so uh, we cannot, cannot be chosen in a sample. So, uh, you know, under coverage uh, might simply just be uh, when I'm uh, sampling a uh, AP statistics class. Um, I've got under coverage of those uh, students that are not in AP statistics class or um, if the AP stats class only has freshmen, sophomores, and juniors in it. Uh, I am having under coverage because the seniors are not included in that. They cannot be chosen in that sample. Non-response is another type of uh, error that can happen uh, even in good sampling. Uh, and that occurs when an individual chosen for the sample can't be contacted or refuses to participate. You know, there's some words can't be contacted or refuses to participate. And so um, if you say you're doing some door-to-door -door, uh, uh, surveying, um, you know, you, you can simply uh, non-response would be uh, people that just, you know, can't, don't never answer the door. They just can't be contacted. Um, or somebody that when they do answer the door just simply says, nope, I don't want to participate in the survey. Uh, so that's a, a non-response type of error. And then a systematic pattern of incorrect response in a sample survey leads to what's called response bias. Uh, both of these above here, under coverage and non-response, uh, can, both of these can produce response bias. Uh, you know, so that would be a response bias is simply, uh, you know, if, if it's under coverage, um, you have response bias that uh, only the underclassmen were giving their opinions. Um, there's response bias and non-response. Uh, you know, simply that only strong people with strong opinions are probably uh, only responding. And then another type of error that could happen is the wording of questions. Uh, and that's the it has the most important influence on the answers given to a sample survey, and this is why it's so important, so important that uh, when you have people uh, uh, conducting surveys, uh, that they are very well trained, uh, that their body language, uh, the tone of their voice, does not influence somebody's answer, um, and then also uh, simply the wording of the question uh, can certainly uh, influence people. Um, so you can say. Uh, questions that, that maybe you're sampling about chocolate chip cookies and you're, you're uh, would say, uh, what do you think of these wonderfully delicious chocolate chip cookies uh, that are, uh, the grocery store is selling? You're certainly creating a bias um, and certainly again creating a response bias uh, you know, for those people by the way you're wording that question. So here's everything we should have learned through section 4.1. Again, make sure you know the difference or be able to identify a population and a sample in a study. You should know uh, about a voluntary response sample as well as a convenience sample of being bad. Okay, they lead to bias. Um, you know, how to learn how you should know how to obtain a random sample. Uh, just simply slips of paper into a hat. Your technology, so that's the RAND int uh, a menu on your calculator, um, or the table of random digits, which is table D. Uh, you should be able to distinguish a simple random sample. Again, that a simple random sample is our SRS. Uh, you should be able to distinguish that between uh, a simple random sample and a stratified random sample or a cluster sample. 
Um, and then explain some of the errors that we have that we just talked about. So about under coverage and non-response and question wording. Because uh, each of those uh, can lead to a response bias. All right, that should be the end of section 4.1. And there certainly is some homework to uh, pay attention to. And in day three of section 4.1, uh, we got problems numbers 27, 29, 31, 33, and 35. And uh, wish you the best uh, getting those five problems done. And we'll see you in section 4.2. Have a good one.